Welcome, 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 everybody, to episode number 16 of Wealth for Generations. I'm accompanied here by Mr. Engineer of All Engineers, Mr. Dip to the Lean. Good morning, good morning. And we are also accompanied by my good friend, Mr. Lionel Ray Music, or who I like to call Mr. L. Bizzle. <laughs> Taking uh, it back. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. Glad you could make it out of your busy schedule, sir. So um, we're going to do something a little different today. I know I've been saying that kind of frequently, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're still early. We're still in the early stages of doing this podcast and, you know, we got to make adjustments as we go. So um, and this isn't necessarily an adjustment. This is just it is what it is. Yeah. I was busy and I didn't make an outline today. So we are raw dogging it today. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's cool though. It's cool. I'm not worried about it. Y'all worried about it? No, nah, I'm Let's good. Do it, man. Nah, I ain't worried about it. Go raw the time, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Right? My lady's locked in. Raw the dog. Roll all day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today our episode is gonna be about what you won't do for love. So basically kind of saying um the extremes and and the things that you feel like people wouldn't necessarily do, the average person wouldn't necessarily do in order to chase this passion or this love of yours. And I feel like we got a, a good team in here today. Excuse me, a good team of gentlemen in here today to talk about this because we all are following our passion in our own rights right now. Um, you know, Dip has his studio and his uh, rising number of podcasts. What are we at now? Like 27? 27 podcasts? So tune in, you know, get on Hobari Entertainment. No, I think we got like six, <laughs> but we're going to be at 27. We'll be at 27 soon enough, you know, but um, you can check all of them out on HabariEntertainment.com. Any of those other podcasts like um, the Mom and Pop Shop, the Von Rebel, the XL Dreamcatcher Show, and Habari Live. <clears throat> That's the granddaddy of us all there. But, um, you know, I want to talk more about Mr. Lionel Ray Music. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and get into kind of where the music started. So, um, I know I met you as a young adult, but, um, <clears throat> did the music start before, before we met? I mean, there, there had to be some, somewhere you were, we were already kind of deciphered. Man, like that, I'm so. telling you, <laughs> it, <clears throat> music started for me in the womb, for nice, real. Nice. Like before even. Um, so I'm a PK. Or actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before we get into all that, yeah, yeah. Can we get your your official title real quick, just so that people know what you do for a living? So, Lionel Ray Music is not only my DJ artist name; it is also the name of my DJ company, and I am the owner of my own events and DJ business, a studio, um, and of course, I release music um, internationally. Nice, nice, nice. So if any of you guys need some party music, this is the man. Or some <laughs> some loving music. You got a couple of, I'm not sure if you're still working on that. Oh, no, I no, yeah, no. I got some good tracks. I got some new, <laughs> and I got some new stuff coming, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, the yeah. new stuff that I got coming out, I, I, we, made some, uh, we made some really, really hot kind of remakes. Nice, nice, nice. I was jamming out. Um, I found some of your stuff on um, Facebook. What I've been trying to do is as I share stuff, I've been trying to put local artists on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to kind of get them that much more exposure. You know, I got people all around the country uh tuning in on my facebook and um the podcast and stuff like that so um i found yours it kind of had me cracking up at first because <laughs> it totally I've, I've i've been out in the scottsdale club scene <laughs> what was it was it something like the old stuff or some of the new stuff it was uh the <laughs> derrick's an asshole oh <laughs> how old is that one is that no that's that, new that the newer that, one <clears throat> yeah, but the intro of it had me cracking up because i was like this is so like, <laughs> <laughs> no funny thing, right? Funny is that song started out as a gag. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I was at a, I was DJing at a party. We were throwing at a friend's house, and I had this house song playing. I jumped on the mic and started kind of just making fun of one of my friends, and I was like, "Yo, Derek's an asshole!" Like to the beat <laughs> and stuff, and it was just funny. We're all laughing in the house, and I, I didn't think anything of it. So then later on that night. Apparently he'd been walking around saying it, and I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> he's like, did you make that song? And I was like, I'm not gonna make that song. He actually, so Derek, 
Yeah. Eric actually wanted you to make the song. Bro, this is how much he loves this song. He goes out. Like, when we go places, he bumps the song and rolls the windows down as we drive up to places. He's the, like, what sucks about that song, which is also pretty awesome, it's actually one of my, like, top viewed song across multiple platforms. So, like, I've got some songs that are higher over here, higher over there, but when you put all the platforms where my music is available together, mm -hmm. that's my number one song. Yeah. Right and it's mostly because he will call people and send the song to them, send the <laughs> link, be like, hey, look, this is the song that my friend made about me. And it's all about some dude being an asshole, which he's got those asshole tendencies in the yeah. song. Like, <laughs> The, the car in the song that's about him like how you describe the guy all of that stuff is like to the t who he is and it's and it's hilarious that is hilarious that's but you know i mean even though it wasn't totally planned that's some excellent marketing as well you know <laughs> right? like how how you couldn't have you couldn't have planned that you couldn't have planned that any better so i use it as a joke now too because anytime i meet somebody who's named Derek and i've got other friends who were named Derek, mm -hmm. i send it to him like, mm. hey, this is for you. Hey, man, I made you a song, ready? <laughs> yeah. Derek? Oh, dude, I got this perfect song for you, bro. Watch, well, you're going to send it to some guy that's going to be all sensitive one day or all depressed. Like, man, why'd you send me this song? Derek's, Derek's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, man, that one, that one's a good one. I had that on the, um on my story when I was showing the, the promo. Yeah, yeah. I had it on there. That's funny. And I was like, oh, man, this intro is so perfect. Wow. <laughs> it's a, you <laughs> know, a funny thing, too, is like, so my workflow is down. That song took me about an hour. Nice, nice. It's so just like hanging them out now. Once I got into it, it was just, it was fun, and I, and and he was in there. So like, if uh, mm. at the end that laugh, that like obnoxious laugh, yeah, yeah, that's his that's actual it. laugh. <laughs> that's how he actually laughs in real life. That's it's just so, like that's so great. That's yeah. so that's such a great story. <laughs> But that's what happens, you know, when you when you can merge your life into doing what you love, like yeah. we were kind of talking about earlier. You know what I mean? It's hard sometimes for people to um, balance their their work and love passion, but it's even harder sometimes to merge your work and your passion. And <clears throat> being able to be at a house party, DJing for your friends, and then boom, a song just falls in your lap. That's yeah. That's definitely some some that's some that's kind of like what we were talking about actually before we came on too about how the old music is different. Yeah, man. That's how the old music used to happen. Like it'd just be people having a good time, or just something happened and you're just like, oh, I'll take this in my hand. Like, or you could have been going home from the party and be like, you know what, Derek was a fucking asshole today. <laughs> like that guy, man. He's he always gets drunk, then he starts acting like an asshole. Yeah, asshole sober. <laughs> oh man, I can make that a song. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's so so natural. But um, we got a little derailed. Let's get back to you talking about where it all started from. Where did Lionel music come from? So I'm a P I'm womb. a PK, which for anybody who doesn't know what that means, mm -hmm. I'm a pastor's kid. And I actually come from a line of women pastors. So my grandmother was a pastor, my great grandmother was a pastor, and my you know, my all day. All day. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. And uh, my grandmother was also the choir director. So everybody in my family either like dances and plays a music instrument or sings, you know, or so, and, and it's like, it's a gift that we have in, in my family mm -hmm. across the board. Um, I was the, I'm probably the bottom of the well. And what I say by the bottom of the well is all that, all that juice, all that muck from that well, all that music when it settles somewhere, it all settled on me. Mm. So I, I get the best concentration of it because instead of, you know, getting sunned or being in other places to, to drift out, I'm, I, I sat at the bottom being, you just absorbed you know, it all, absorbed everything from Helped everybody, from yeah. all the different areas. And, and when I was younger, um, I kind of have an inquisitive type of brain. I would pick up stuff and just play with it. And mm -hmm. like, if I, if there was a melody in my head from like a Christmas song or something, I could pick it out on a piano. Saxophone was one of my first instruments. Like I played nine different instruments and most of those I was trained by like just playing with them. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh yeah, I can play that song or play it by ear. Yeah. I can play along with you. What are you in? Mm -hmm. And, and, and literally that was my childhood and then singing in church. 
you know, because, you know, when you're the pastor's kid, yeah, you, got you, you gotta go to church. You know, you can't miss, you can't miss a day. Nope. <laughs> Mama going, and she ain't gonna leave you at home by herself. I'm like, can I stay home? Nope. nope. All right, cool. So, you know, whether you're awake or sleep in the back, from, from a baby, I've, I've been around different styles of music and, and, um, and my mom actually, where I get my name from is my mom, while she was pregnant with me, I guess, apparently like she, people crave food. Mm-hmm. She craved Lionel Richie music. Mm. And so that's, that's an interesting one. Part of the reason why my name is Lionel. Nice. Nice. And, and it's funny too, cause you know, I, <laughs> I, uh, I use that as a selling point too. <laughs> and it, and it comes up. Because people, some people will be like, oh, kind of like Lionel Murray. And like, you're trying to be clever, but yeah. You mean Richie? <laughs> yeah, like, you just said like yourself. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's me all day. No. Um, like Lionel Ray? Like Lionel Richie. Is, it's like, and I'm like, yeah. Trying to be clever. I was actually right. named after it. I was like, no, that's right. Like, yes, exactly. Exactly. That's a, you're 100% correct, sir. <laughs> yeah. So I'm proud of that. You know, it's something, something I didn't always wear as a badge. That's why, like, Everybody calls me LB. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that was like my persona for a while. Mm-hmm. It helps me to, because, again, being mm-hmm. at the bottom of the well, no one goes for the stuff down there. So, like in my family, and because I have a big family, and even though anyone like who knows me like yourself, mm-hmm. I also got a personality that's that's big, but I'm quiet. <laughs> and that's because a lot of times you don't, you know, when you're around a ton of people and you're the youngest, they don't pay attention. Mm-hmm. And I got used to, okay, this is who I have to be when I'm in the front, but this is who I really am. And no right. one really pays attention to that. So LB became that person that was in the front. Mm-hmm. And then once I started to do more music and be more comfortable and confident with who I am and what I wanted, you know, it just, one day I was like, you know what? I just got to be me. You got to be you. You got to be Lionel gotta be that way (laughs) that's perfect that's awesome so then um so then i would say we probably met what in like your maybe about uh i was in that weird lionel uh lionel uh no it was lb is now i was in that weird lb is now i was with uh blast bigs yeah yeah we had the notebook bastards for me yep yep, yep, that's what it was that's what it was notebook bastards yeah i remember being in the crowd we did them, it up. Yo, we did shows. We went on that little tour go, going between here and Cali and um and then uh we did a bunch of stuff. Yeah, man. That was that was the first little little nudge of of the actual performing that I saw from you. You know what I mean? I'm not sure if you did. Did you do any like uh school plays or I've been, I mean there was... I've been on stage since I was about five. So like my aunt she was really into theater. So there's like two major theater troops um, back in the day in Arizona. And she had me part of that. So whenever they needed a kid in a play, oh, I got a nephew, throw him on stage. Right. <laughs> um, and then, of course, I was in, you know, drama band and, and all that type of stuff. I was a, I was a real like, I wouldn't call myself a theater geek, but like I loved trying stuff out and doing stuff uh, that would put me in front of people. Right, right. Um, and, uh, you know, it just it kind of kind of got me ready for where I am now in life. But like I've been doing, I've been performing on stages and in front of crowds since I was like five. Nice, nice. And I kind of think that's kind of how, or not how, but why we linked up so well is because I've always kind of been the similar way of as far as like I have a big personality, but in certain situations I'm. Cause like, uh, gosh, are oh, you methodical? That's what it is. You were smart. You're smarter than, than most people give you credit for. Don't let them know. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is like, so, you know, for, for, for scholars or, or nerds of, of music style, writing style, you know, you got mm-hmm. rappers, you got MCs, you got people like common, you got, you know, people like Wayne, you know, those different levels and those different levels of thought. Mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. or or why certain artists sound a certain way and that higher level of thinking that a lot of people don't always understand without it being <laughs> yeah. eccentric because you think about you know who would who would take someone like a kanye west and put him in the same realm like mentally as like 
a Jay Z or or something like that or rock mm. him, you know, or you you wouldn't right, you right. wouldn't say Ghostface Killer in and and uh, Kanye West, but I would because I go the only difference between them is being able to handle your thought and having the mental instability that a Kanye has. Mm. But for some reason, it comes out when you look at how he makes his beats, how he writes his songs and his hooks. Like you can't be just like plain dumb and put that much symmetry throughout the whole thing. Right, right. No, Kanye is a very, very intelligent man. And he's like, I, I, I he has a lot of negative stuff the last few years. <clears throat> and even, I'm not even gonna lie, I even threw a little dirt on him too, a couple times, you know? <laughs> like I was hating on the trash bag sale and, and um, some of the freaking out and stuff like that. But I'm the kind of person too that's like, no matter what I see, or what I say in the moment, I can't take away the fact that you're still a music. He's still a musical genius. Musical like he's genius. Still very intelligent person. <clears throat> and like I might get a little flack for this, but you know, R. Kelly has been sentenced and he is doing his time, <laughs> but he is still a musical, musical god, genius. man. Like he's still, like I'm not trying to. What? Put my son on him. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you need to listen to R. Kelly. But um, you know, I'm not gonna turn it off, and I'm not gonna discredit his ability because he made some bad decisions. I mean, it's like, you know, you got all these hedge fund dudes, these bankers, Wall Street people, um, restaurateurs, these these guys who make millions of dollars and help other people make millions of dollars, and you may talk to them or know them because that's your personal banker. Mm -hmm. now you don't until you know what he does when he gets home how much stuff these people do behind closed doors right. you don't think about nothing now if you find out are you gonna stop making the money that he's making you or are you gonna keep going now i may not buy into you but man his music had a part in, in my <laughs> history right right especially especially that particular person and like i can R. say kelly yeah. michael jackson stuff like that no matter what kind of allegations it goes back to kind of like I was saying um, before, like there's certain music that even if it was popular or not because of what you were doing. Yeah. When that song was relevant in your life is why you, you gonna, can go back it's to gonna it be and that. have the nostalgia for yeah. it. You know, and, and mm -hmm. I don't have to agree. And I and I and I will even publicly state, you know, my disagreement with something you may do as a person, mm -hmm. you know, but it's hard for me. To say, all right, well, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to R. Kelly's in the closet because that that whole <laughs> that whole thing was just funny. For one, <laughs> it was hilarious. And well, well produced but, yeah. and entertaining. And yo, no I remember what I was doing when I first found that. I remember where I was at. Right, right. You know, and I'm like, yo, that's that's something that's never going to go away. Right. I mean, there's gonna there's a lot of kids out there that have no idea what we're talking about, and we'll never. <laughs> But that that was a genius move, no matter how funny it is because of how much humor he tried to put into it and no, how, no matter how funny it was because it we just laughed at it. Fire. <laughs> but just sitting down and thinking about the the how how he put it together like that. Yeah. It was a play. He created a play <laughs> out of it, out of his music. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just <clears throat> it was just phenomenal. But um, so what what I really want to talk about though is I want to make sure that we we uh, touch on making people know that it's okay to make certain moves, even if everyone else doesn't agree. Yeah. So that's kind of that's kind of where the title of the show is coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so um, I want to kind of just share, or not necessarily me. I want you to share. Yeah. I want you to share some stories or some experiences you have have had that um, kind of show what you won't what you what won't you do for your love. You know what I mean? Like there's certain people who are like, you know what? Um, there's there's movies out there, right? Yeah. Excuse me. There's like scary movies and stuff out there where you have the killer who's like, you need to cut off your toe or cut off your foot <laughs> or or you won't survive. You know what I mean? So it's like. Then you're going to cut off that toe or you're going to yeah, just die. Yeah, exactly. It's like, Can Lionel, you do it? I want you to Can you do take it? off a toe or you'll never be able to play music again. Well, I mean. Create I, music again. I feel like to play. properly and, and to properly answer that question, you have to understand two things. 
the first the first thing is that you're military trained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> Bust down. Um, uh, um, uh, that most people are living a, a, a level in a world of insanity. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, we get caught up in what is accepted. Mm -hmm. And, oh, to be a music artist, you have to do mixtapes. You have to do this. You have to do that. You know, and but even though we hear these stories of like Soldier Boy being the first, you know, on the Internet artist, it was something mm -hmm. different. Right. You know, you know, people like Tyrese being found on a bus. Right. You know, he blew up, it, up a Coca-Cola commercial. Now, those they were probably doing. You know, a lot of the same stuff that we all do, but it's mm -hmm. the things different that they were doing that got them the eyebrow, which is the, the initial. Yeah. Hmm. Let's look into what else he's doing. Yeah. 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 Now the second thing is mm -hmm. most people are afraid to fail. They're afraid of the no. Yes. Or correct. You know, they, they are afraid of <laughs> <she's> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> They're afraid of, you know, looking at something and it not being what they're used to or what they recognize. And before they even try to see if they can win or learn something going, that's not me. Mm -hmm. Now you take those two things. And I think they make the basis of why most people aren't truly successful, even though every person is successful. 100% of this world is a world of successful people. How do you say that? What do you mean like in a general sense? Because <clears throat> let's let's put it let's put it in a simple day to day process. You got 25, 24 hours in a day. Twenty four hours, right? Mm -hmm. And then those twenty four hours, you're gonna spend. You gotta do that a couple times to get twenty four. Oh, you know. You're gonna spend. <laughs> I'm. You're gonna spend like let's say six to eight hours on average. Six to eight hours of production of right? sleep. Oh, sleep, sleep. Okay. Of sleep, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you got to take those hours out. Right. Then you got food. You got probably eight hours of work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever job you in. So you take those hours out. Most people's time limit leaves you about five hours a day to be productive in anything. Mm -hmm. Now, if those five hours a day you spend working on music, that's what you're successful in. Half the people right. in this in our society are either overweight, watch too much TV, and they can tell you everything about that show. And they're a successful person right. in being a mediocre TV watcher or someone who just sits around and does nothing and complains about what they would like to do. And they're successful at that because we don't see success as a practice, a lifestyle. You know. Mm. And to go back to answer your question, the only thing that I won't do for what I love is anything that takes away from what I love or anything that takes away from me and my spirit of, of how I feel as a man. So you're saying we can take a pinky toe, but we can't take your actual pinky. I mean, play the instrument. yeah, 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 yeah. You, if I have to, you know, <laughs> and again, it, dep it also depends on, on the outcome. What, what am I getting? You know, cause I continue to play music. I'll die for music. <laughs> I don't think I can live without music. Like, honestly, there's, there's no life yeah, seriously. without, like, if you took music away from me, that's my hell. And you I know? don't even, and I don't even create like I used to. I'm just right now, I'm still holding on to just being able to listen. And, you know, I write a little bit here and there for my own, own self. But. That's, the, that's the other thing. Like, it's, it's hard to find out like how to get somewhere. And a lot of times it leaves people with regret or, or feeling uh, unsatisfied. But when you put the the time in, the work in, mm -hmm. and you are flexible of just getting out there and trying things or allowing opportunities to fall in your lap, and it may not be exactly what you want, but you go for it and say, hey, at the worst, somebody here is going to see me or I'm going to learn something. You right. Know, um, there's Being going optimistic. to be an opportunity after the opportunity. So it may not even be that, but it may be someone who's there. You know, so when you're in those situations, you know, you look at the fact that just being open to what can happen next can put you in a position to do what you're supposed to do. Like when I got out of the military, 
Um, and I had first moved back to Arizona, looking for a job, trying to figure out what to do with my life. I wanted to go back to school. I knew I wanted to do music. And somebody that I met just from doing like the School of Rock stuff mm -hmm. introduced me to another guy who owned a company called Living Energy. And they do bar mitzvahs and high school dances. And I'm, I'm like, wondering how you're getting into I'm like, yeah. cause I was, I was watching, I forget what I was watching, but I was like, is that a, is that a bar mitzvah? Yeah, man. I was like, they got the chair in the air. Yeah. They got it. I have seen that somewhere before. I'm like, and, and, how the hell is he there? And and it's so funny you gotta be Jew to do bar mitzvahs. It's funny. So so th that's funny because what what people say and that's it, they think it's a joke, and they'll be like, oh man, you black, you just the entertainment, mm -hmm. or what you doing in there with those people running around on the mic singing, dancing and stuff for them at the parties and stuff. And I'm like making money, right? <laughs> and and performing right, in right. front of people. You can't handle yeah. stage fright when every weekend you're in front of like uh, at least two, three hundred new strangers. Right. Right. Dancing and singing, whatever, you, mm -hmm. you know. And and the thing is, somebody else may come up and be like, bar mitzvahs? You want me to dance at a bar mitzvah? Yeah, a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I don't I see, know about I feel that. Like if, That's corny. That's why. I tell you this right now. <laughs> I'm, I can charge anywhere from twenty five hundred to about five thousand dollars for you, five hours of work. You can you tell me that's corny. You go ahead. <laughs> you can probably charge any. I mean that. It depends on the size that of the mitzvah. out there, but you know, for bar mitzvah, you can probably charge no. whatever the fuck you want for. Bar I mean, mitzvah. any party. Like, you know, you got mm. artists at nightclubs, rap artists, DJs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get your name high enough. You know, for you go to a club to see anybody, they paying some that club paying some money to have yeah, them there. Yeah, for sure. And, but no, I was just saying, like you know, if you if you know, yeah, Jews. Jewish oh, people yeah, yeah. keep that money in, and yeah, they, they and are, they got money. They are known for that. They, they probably like five. That's it. Just five thousand. No, <laughs> like, uh, no, 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 no. So, and that's and that's the thing. I mean, I won't. And without going into too much detail, they, they spend more than that over the course of the whole thing. But it's like you, you know, you set your own worth, mm -hmm. and that's only if you are, you know, confident enough to get out there find out what something is worth and putting yourself in that space. And I had a great opportunity um, because, I, you know, for one, I needed a job. Right. And it wasn't even like a big job. They were like, hey, we'll give you a couple parties a week. You get like two parties and you're just going to be a dancer. You know, you come in, you help with this, you help with that. We're going to teach you how to do all of this stuff and we'll pay you like 300 bucks. I was like, bet, you know, that's at least mm -hmm. 300 bucks a week, you know, for, for, for these months that I can, I can get right now. Like bet, yeah, mm -hmm. we got a party. We'll put you on next next week. I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks to come watch it. If you like it, we'll put you on. I was like, bro, I want that money. I don't right. care. Let's go. And now I own my own business, doing the same thing that they were teaching me years ago. So that's the way you. Let's take a quick break. For sure, for sure. We're gonna pay some bills real quick. Mister Dip to the lean. Hit the commercial, please. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Sorry if you saw me just staring down looking for a moment, but I was looking at the feed on Facebook and I forgot that there's like a 15 second <laughs> separation. So you might have saw me just staring at the desk for a second there. But anyways, we are back with Mr. Lionel Ray Music and the engineer of all engineers, Mr. Dip to the Lean. Yo. <clears throat> 
So just real quick, just a side note, I wanted to throw this out there. Mr. Humanitarian move of the year is my community barbecue and water battle. You might be able to make it this year. Hopefully you ain't got no events going on. It's going to be on we October 1st. <clears throat> it's October 1st. We're going to be um, out in Avondale this year. So I have a business called Desert Land Kids, which helps promote local entrepreneurs and just things to do around the Valley events and things of that nature. So as Desert Land Kids, I also like to participate in humanitarian moves. So I volunteer with the Who I Am Foundation throughout the year. But every year we get together and we do a big community barbecue. We jump around the valley. We've been in Peoria, Phoenix, um, Avondale, Goodyear, Glendale. So we've just been everywhere. This is going to be our sixth year doing it. <clears throat> and I just wanted to invite you guys. If any of you guys are going to be in the Avondale area the weekend of October 1st, Come on down, free food, a uh, big water balloon battle at the end, uh, towards the end. We'll be holding some raffles as well, just to kind of raise funds for the nonprofit Who I Am Foundation. And it's just a good place to kind of hang out and mingle with the community and meet some people. And we do um, invite local businesses as well. So if you want to come down and do a little bit of networking too. <clears throat> you got to have somebody there playing music, man. I want to, but I'm thinking maybe like, year 10 or so we might be able to do something like that uh, no, man. Uh, <laughs> we'll man. better get it together soon because we're gonna have to yeah. we got some stuff coming man well we just gotta we talk about it thing. you know we'll, we'll yeah, put it together we, we if we i can I'll, I'll donate some services yeah, we got only thing we have to do is just it's about renting we just rent us a stage and rent all yeah. the equipment we'll get it going man yeah yeah when we do our first one about. together like the, you know that's i got all the equipment I'm like, I'm like, mm, oh yeah i Stage got everything there you go bro I got everything. Be money. That's, that's what we do. Permit at the park for it. Yeah, yeah. Like, but, hey, so you went you with the Habari team now. <laughs> <laughs> when you see the fundraiser starting out a year a year out, then you know we're going big that year. When right. the fundraisers start a year away mm -hmm. from the barbecue, then you know that's the year that we're going big. We're going to have Lionel Ray music headlining. It's real. We got a couple yeah, people that I want to get out there, man. Um, no, no crazy hip hop though. But uh, you know, yeah, keep it clean, definitely, family yep, friendly. I go. love that. Yep, family friendly. Yes, you know family I mean? friendly. And, uh, that, that's but we how can't we're play. Going. Sorry, Derek, but we can't play your track. <laughs> we're not playing that one. Yeah, you know, clean barbecue. version of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Derek's a butthole. Yeah, <laughs> we ain't got it. But yeah, that was a quick little shameless plug, real quick. But um, you know, and actually, to be honest, <clears throat> not to stray away from the community barbecue too far. Real quick, I just want to say that right there is another act of what you won't do for love. You know what I mean? Like my passion is being able to put myself in a position so I can assist people. Yeah. Like I, I work for a task rabbit. I work for um, Uber Eats and doing deliveries and stuff like that. And my mentality getting into those things were thinking about disabled and elderly people. I mean, that's not all I deliver to, but that was my. <coughs> initial thought process when yeah. I went into it. That was my <clears throat> my thought process for Desert Land Kids was about being able to show people, like I'm sure you've heard it before, being out here forever, like there's nothing to do in Arizona. There's oh yeah, there's to tons of stuff to do out here. Tons of stuff, tons, tons of stuff. So you just gotta know when I and where. my own business to, to create my community of talented people so I can communicate with you all and yeah. let you know where is that Where's where's where is their stuff to do? I don't know why I stuttered on that. Because <laughs> we like, think about him, he we're, dying we're, over we're, there, we're, right? right? <laughs> we might have to go dip the Heimlich or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he got some water in there. <laughs> but um, but yes, let's get back to what yeah. Lionel Ray won't do. So or not won't do, but what what yeah. is the stuff that is not off limits? Like like you said, you just got back from California, man. I just got back from Cali. <laughs> like um, just like I, I believe he hasn't even been home yet. Uh, no, no, I went home. I went home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I went home to take a shower. Went home, you took get a the shower. California funk off real quick. Yeah, yeah, man, because that's a drive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and 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 the trip, like so, which, man, I was I was actually mad. I was mad on the way back home because <laughs> my boy didn't do any of the driving. Mm. So, traffic and stuff and accidents. Six hour drive up there on Friday morning. Mm. Unload my truck because I took equipment, lights, trussing speakers and stuff it's a friend a friend of his wedding mm -hmm. and um whenever you do an event you got to expect that there's always going to be something that goes wrong 
And right. I had like a bunch of stuff that went wrong. And I'm doing this, especially for the price that I did it for, which is like a kick in the face. But it's fine because it's for a friend mm -hmm. and the possibility of making new friends and making new business. And we go out there, sleep. I actually didn't go to sleep Friday night that much. We went out. We wanted to walk around and stuff. So we had the rehearsal dinner. Then we went mm -hmm. to a couple of the clubs around town uh, in yeah, the little city we were at. Trying to figure out if we'd get into some uh -huh, trouble. Uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. then got up in the Living morning. Living single life. Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, you got to have fun. You got to live. <laughs> you got to live. You got to work and you got to live. Yes, yes. And so we did a lot of living. And then the next day, yesterday, get up, 9 o'clock, very little sleep, and set up this wedding. Mm -hmm. Then run the wedding. <clears throat> oh, you run, you're doing the whole wedding. You're not just mm -hmm. doing the entertainment. Yeah. So I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got I got the the sound for the ceremony and making sure everybody's mic'd up oh, okay, and all of okay. that. I was thinking you're just doing the um, DJ and all of that stuff. Uh, like DJ and just the reception. I no, thought you were doing. I do. I can do all you of do the whole thing. Okay. Okay. If if necessary, I'll do. If it anybody's all. interested, he's doing the whole thing for the wedding. Wedding yeah. season is right around the corner, like right. Right, right around the corner too. Just saying. So then we did the reception, um, and then so I got to be here with you today. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, what, what time is before we leave? What time is this event? Because if we going back the same night <laughs> after a full day, I need to make sure I'm not too tired because that's right. five six hour drive. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be done at eleven. Mm. We didn't end the party till like after 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Right. A wedding? <laughs> you know, we're at a private. And they were probably still going, right? We're at a private, uh, we're at a private winery. Galileo uh, Private Winery. Shout out to them because their mm. wine was amazing. And the owners were just, here, you want this? You want this? Oh, I was yeah. like, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I got my pinky yeah. up and all. <laughs> and, you know, so we get out of there late. And then I have to tear everything down and we drive home. And, Man, it was it was a it was a drive. So you guys but, still went the same day? Yeah, came home mm. this morning. So what you got here at like five? I got home. I got back to my house at like uh, eight o'clock. Like eight. Dang. I had to unload my truck. Basically, and everything. Did it. Basically, overnight. Take him home. Came back, showered, drove up here. Oh no, homie would have had to sleep in the car. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Like you especially since we left so late. Back. Especially since we left late. Like, how about you take the truck back? I'm going to take my car to go do this interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So, but when you think about the logistics of everything and like staying there late, not leaving on time, mm -hmm. um, and then all the other things, me driving both ways like the whole time, which sucks. You know, no one right. wants to actually. That's 12 hours. You know, you want to shoot. Half a day yeah, of driving. Yeah, you go by yourself on something. It's cool. It's whatever you, you prepare for. You, you know, you got mm -hmm. your music or however you vibe out, but you with somebody else doing something and, and considering them being in the same vehicle. And not being able to get into your perfect space, you expect them to at least take ha half of the drive and take a quarter right, of the drive. Right. Let me let me stretch my legs and sit back on the did passenger side. Stay, did he at least stay up in a? He stayed up, kind of. Well, he's yeah. He, I feel we like hung that's out. The worst. I feel like that's the worst is when they're there <laughs> and then they pass out an hour into the drive and you're like, man, now I, I gotta been, try yeah, to I've keep been myself in that awake and I can't blast the music because you sleep. Oh man, so. nope, nope. <laughs> I've been in that situation like three times and every single time I'm like, I hope you can sleep with this music on. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, nope, it's gonna happen. But um, and and, and I say it that way because I'm not I'm not really upset about it, but it's just like, all right, so a normal person or a person that's not thinking about the longevity of everything. You know, or mostly thinking about like how they feel would get mad. You know, you're going to argue. You might even tell that person in the middle of the drive, like, no, we pulling over. You got to do this. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. I'm focused on what I'm doing. Right. And if he really wanted to, you know, pitch in for that driving, he would have said something. That's how I think, you know, right, I'm right. always going to think this is how I got to do it. And if, if it changes, cool. That way I'm never disappointed. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not expecting anyone to do anything else. And the cool thing about putting myself in those positions, which sometimes are awkward positions is there's, um, uh, a really big company out here, RB, Relentless Beats, that does shows and festivals mm -hmm. and stuff. And one of their main guys is a friend of a friend that was at the wedding. Another mm -hmm. guy um, who helps, does a lot of events like this because they own the winery and stuff. I got to actually mingle and hang out with them. And because I don't try to meet people, I just try to present myself everywhere I go as, as thankful mm -hmm. You know, thank you for having me. I love your winery. And thank you for letting me be here at your wedding. You know, it opens mm. that door to like, okay, you know, guys what do I want to give you now? Right. And not that I'm trying to get anything <laughs> from anybody, uh, 
but it just it it, it makes those it those meetings and conversations easier to have. It doesn't always have to be something tangible either. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like you said, it it could just be the relationship in itself. Yeah. Like next time you're in town, you might be able to stop by that winery. Yep. And they oh no, like, oh, they yeah, told me to come back. back. Yeah, yeah. They were like, exactly. come back. When they, you come back, we're gonna give you a tour and show you how we make this stuff. I was like, yes, I want to learn that. And see, and that'd be awesome in itself. Like, even if they weren't like, here's all this free wine. If they were just like, oh, we loved you, we loved your music. When next time you're in town, we'll give you a free tour. Yeah, yeah. And and I was like, I was talking to them because I'm like, look, mm-hmm. all these artists get like a vodka or or uh, um, you know tequila and stuff. And again, what you won't do if you really love being yourself, find something that someone doesn't have. You name me a rap artist or any type of music artist that has their own wine. Because I don't know them. Nope. They've, they've been going the champagne route. Now. Not a wine yet. Here's the be, thing. Be careful, though, because I got a feeling. Got a feeling Kevin Hart. He might. He, might you know, oh, yeah, because it's his talk show. Yeah, 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 yeah. He might be on. To, he probably he, got some shit in the works now, right now. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. What most people don't understand, right, is um, with wines, different levels of wines appreciate mm. so let's say and it's mostly dessert wines from what i learned and and this is another thing you know be open to finding information for me every time i go somewhere i always think of where i'm at and how i can apply that to who i am and what i'm doing mm-hmm. regardless of how crazy or or off the wall that may be you you know you got a seminar for x y and z or you're just in this place with your friend and all his family is white and they don't season their food right. But you know, you never know who in that family does something if you don't ask the questions. I never and just know be a baked potato would be so good just by itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can learn that at, at that kind of household. So, you know, I, I was just like, wine, you know, and I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, really good dessert wines are expensive mm-hmm. because, you know, and even some like different kind of wines, but they're expensive because for one, you can't make a lot of certain things with that. It's not like you can keep doing that same process to get mm-hmm. to that point. And then some of those things, as they age, when you make something that as it age, it changes the flavor for the better. Mm-hmm. That's something that people will spend a lot of money for because you get one bottle and you won't finish it for like a year or two and sometimes even longer. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's those type of things that I'm into. It's like, okay, cool. What is something I can give to my kids' kids? Right. What is something I can learn that no one else is doing so that when I add it to, to me, it's like, again, I'm standing out. I'm doing something different. You know, I'm not like everybody else on the block. Right. Right. And that's uh, that's that's what we're all about here at Wealth for Generations. You know what I mean? We're trying to gather our seeds so we can plant seeds for our seeds. Did you, did you catch that? Planted seeds for our <laughs> seeds. <laughs> so <clears throat> just like LB was saying, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid to, to gather some information wherever you're at, you know? Even if you don't necessarily want to be there. Yeah. If no, it's a new experience. You got to want to be everywhere. You and, and and you have to put yourself in those positions. One thing that I do is, um, so I, I've gotten into festivals, camping festivals. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and a lot of people see it as hippie. A bunch of white people rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> but i'll tell you right no now <laughs> it is but i'll tell you right now it changed my life the first time i went to one and now mm-hmm. i am rolling around in the dirt with it like oh yeah yeah no seriously honestly i was going through a bad i was did going through a rough some, did you have some of the super mario mushrooms and stuff no i don't do i don't do mushrooms uh, me, I, I, i've like tried that once <laughs> i tried that once and, and yeah oh, it me, didn't go so well. me and the mushrooms i mean it was cool but me and the, me and stuff like that don't get down Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just uh, making sure, yeah, that they didn't have you like on some culty. Like, nah, eat so, the mushroom and roll in the dirt, Lionel. It'll be okay. Nah, so I, there's these two festivals out here, two main festivals that I do. One is called Pitch a Tent, and we do that up in Flagstaff on a private land. Um, and another one, and that um, one's that one's yours, right? Is that the one I saw? That's the, the one I helped put on. Yeah, yeah. So the okay. guys who run that, that's that's like <laughs> my crew, and we do stuff together throughout the valley, and that's our our yearly. Um, and then I have another one that I've been a guest of that mm-hmm. I'm starting to get into their circle. Um, and, and that one is don't trip up in Utah on this, uh, in ski Utah. resort. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You better be careful. Yeah. The Mormons out there. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Better be careful, bro. Hey, but everybody, carry a sport. everybody keeps their mouth closed to a certain point when you put enough money in right. their pocket. So right. we rent the space out and it's not like, you know, a thing where it's 
<laughs> how we were joking about it. It's just white people rolling around in the dirt. <laughs> like what I learned, especially the first one I went to, a friend just took me. I was having a bad time. We were making music and stuff. And he's like, yo, there's this festival. Going on. I want to take you to it. And I'm like, I ain't doing nothing else. Mm-hmm. So let's go. And when you get into an area of 30 people or more, mm-hmm. and at the time this place had 500 people, mm-hmm. 500 people camping and hanging out, three stages, mm-hmm. other people selling their stuff and little vendor areas. This is just like out in the woods somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Uh, everyone there was there with the same mind frame, love, happiness, making friends, and also supporting each other, you know, DJs Mm -hmm. supporting other DJs, vendors supporting DJs and back and forth and people going, Oh, this is what you got. Cool. I'll I'll buy this. I'll do this. You know, it's that trade, that Mm -hmm. commerce of positive energy. When you get into any area, no matter if it's house or any type of music um, or any type of business, um, seminar, anything like that. When everyone in there is there for the same reason, with mm-hmm. the same mindset, looking for the same outcome, the energy that you can create literally can like, it, you know, I'm not a chakra person or anything <laughs> like that, but that's, that's the only way I can explain it. Like it well, you opens can, you up. Feel it. Yeah. Yeah. If you feel something, you can't deny it, no matter how deep you are into spirituality yeah. or not. Like it makes you so vulnerable, <clears throat> man, when you're in that position and it's hard not to be happy or it's hard not to feel the same as everyone else. You just kind of like open up Mm -hmm. and that's the type of feeling I crave now. And I would have never found that in my life, which has also helped me with doing things. So what I started doing is the next year I said, you know what? I want to DJ this event. What Mm -hmm. do I got to do to DJ this event? And the first thing I did was like, when's your next gig? When's your next show? I'll DJ for free. Mm. people don't like that word people don't like free right but mm. djing for free got me paid the last when gig got me hosting a stage the last pitch it's it dj and helping put up the stages and stuff in utah for free and buying my own ticket because i was there and the people i knew got me a prime spot i had the best camping spot in the whole everybody had to be outside where all the stages were in Utah, Mm -hmm. I was inside the camp, like the stage ground Mm. up in the corner, close to everything and putting the stages and helping them out because I really wanted to do that, learn more stuff about how to put things together since I have my own company and meet them and learn how they put on these festivals and how they, what goes into this? How hard is this? Is this somewhere I want to get? And again, you may want to be an artist, but if you're not in enough places to find out as much of that business, you may find out you might be a better manager, make more money, have more fun and get mm-hmm. to do, you know, but you're not putting yourself out there in all these different areas. Mm-hmm. So every time there's an opportunity for me to be like, Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. You guys seem cool. This, this seems like a good business or whatever. There's something there that I might be able to take, even if it's mm-hmm. the smallest thing, because that smallest thing can change the rest of your plan so much. Right. Right. And now I'm at this point where I'm doing shows. I'm linked in with all these different groups here in the Valley. And I've got so much support. You know, once you get into that position, it's like, okay, what do you do next? Because there should be no way you can fail if you do it right. Mm-hmm. Because now you have all of these people who know who you are. And, all the support. And, and because you're positive, because you're putting in the energy, you're putting in the work, and you're not asking for anything in return. You're going to get everything and more Mm -hmm. by continuing that cycle. And so I'm not afraid of free because I know what I'm worth. I know how to get what I'm worth. It's not like I'm going to do every single party, but if there's an opportunity to help like desert land kids, if there's a, Mm -hmm. if there's an opportunity to, to uh, be out there and learn, you only have so many hours in the day. Right. And I'd rather do this for free then go to the club and spend money on bottle service where I'm not going to learn. Yeah. You look good. You're popping your, your one paycheck, getting that bottle <clears throat> at the club in Scottsdale. Right. <laughs> but there's a, some kid who's in the studio or in someone else's studio learning mm-hmm. or doing a show over here and he ain't getting paid and he only got three of his friends there, but he's getting practice and somebody that's seen it. People like us, like we, we've, we've been there. We've done that. Yeah. Bottle service and all that. Gosh. 10 minutes. All right. So um, with that being said, we had our 10 minute warning. Not sure if you guys heard that, 
But um, but yeah, man, it's basically what 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 Mr. Lionel Ray is saying is you got to put in the work, and you can't be afraid to try new things. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail either. Don't be afraid to fail. Fail. And that comes with trying lot. new things. Like yeah, when you try something new. You may fail at it. I failed at a lot of stuff. Don't let that hold you back from trying something new because you gain the experience of that action or that situation yeah. or you gain the knowledge of going through that experience, <clears throat> whether you fail or not. Or if you want to really get on your spirituality, <laughs> we'll take it back to uh, what, what Lionel was saying. Like everything is a success. Everything's a success. So even if you feel like you failed, you successfully tried it. Yeah. So you were still successful in a sense because you successfully tried something. Even though you failed at it, you failed at um, getting the end result that you wanted. Yeah, that's but it. But you succeeded at trying that new experience. But um, before we get cut off, um, I do want to do one of my segments. So we didn't do any of them, but I got to do my We Building Boy so today on We Building Boy, we are highlighting Mr. Lionel Ray music. And on We Building Boy, what we do is we like to highlight local, but not limited to entrepreneurs, businesses from around the world, or not around the world, but from wherever. Sorry, I'm just jibber jabbering now. But um, <clears throat> so if somebody wants to come see Mr. Lionel Ray music perform. Yeah. Do you have any um, shows or events or anything like that coming up anytime soon? Um, so here in the Valley, I do. A, I like to do stuff that people can actually come to. So I do a Taco Tuesday event. Um, oh, at, yeah. That's why he's one of the best DJs, because he likes tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taco Tuesday event at Salty Senorita in uh, Old Town Scottsdale. Uh, and Fridays, I'm at the Rack. Shout out John Marriott. Yes, sir. Kenny. I'm playing pool on Friday and DJing at uh, the Rack. Um, but... I'm usually Saturdays um, at doing brunch, brunch house with my boys. Um, and then we just, we throw pop-up events, you know? So if you just, nice. if you're watching my Instagram or my Facebook, Lionel Ray Music on, on all social media sites, Lionel Ray Music. Lionel Ray Music. Lionel Ray just, Music. Just the way it sounds, right? Lionel no Ray mi- Music. No special spelling. No, Lionel Ray Music across the I don't the think world. the people in the back heard you. Oh, Lionel Ray Music. You got it? Okay, good. I think they, I think they got it. That's I bet. Yeah. And um, I... You know, because I have a really good marketing team. So putting out flyers, putting out dates um, when I'm not running bar mitzvahs and running other mm-hmm. parties. So actually on that note, if they wanted to hire you for their next bar mitzvah or their daughter's quinceanera or what have you, how would they reach you? Would they just go through Same the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just or? message me um, at, on Instagram, Facebook. I've got two Facebooks, Lionel Ray Music, my regular page, and then the business artist page. And you can email me. My phone number is on there, my business line. Um, and yeah, I do it. I do quinceañeras, weddings, barbecues. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I have other DJs that work for me. And it's all about, you know, being that positive part and, and that mm-hmm. great energy during people's experiences in their lives. Like someone's birthday, someone's bar mitzvah, or you know, quinceañera. You want that to be special. Right. And you should have a DJ or or MC who Master wants it to ceremony. be special as well. Not just wants to be there to make a check. No, I want mm-hmm. it to be special. When I, I got families who still call me and invite me to dinner, send me Christmas cards and stuff because I actually care. And nice. all my DJs that work for me, they care as well. Nice, nice. That's awesome. And that's usually the how you retain your clients too. When yeah. you when they can tell that you're actually passionate and you care about what you're doing, they will come back to you and they will <clears throat> and they will treat you and things of that nature. But um, I think we're about time. Oh, no, I got like two minutes I can, I can eat up, right? So with that, I'm going to just hit yeah, this guy one more it. time. <laughs> because I really want y'all to come. This is October 1st, Festival Fields Park. It was newly remodeled about two years ago. It's a skate park for all you Avondale people. It's off of Blower Buckeye and Litchfield. But yeah, man. I want y'all to come out. Come get some of my barbecue, and I'll be on the grill. Me and Jess cook all the food. Oh, we know you cook good. So, my boy can cook. <laughs> so, y'all need to come through Chef. and try. You'll get a, a <laughs> taste of what Delicious Dishes, which is uh, my food company, my unofficial official food company. Um, so, we, we, we will have that coming up in the future, the <laughs> catering and stuff like that. But this is how you get a glimpse of it for free. I'm going to get a glimpse of what I can do for free at this uh, barbecue here. 
But um, but yeah, just make sure you guys go on your social media, whether it's uh, your Facebook, your Instagram. Type in Lionel Ray Music. Lionel Ray Music. Follow them for the pop ups. Follow them and find out what's going on with the uh the next pitch of tent. Find out what's going on with that. Find out what's going on on how to schedule your next DJ for your daughter's quinceanera, your son's bar mitzvah, whatever it may be, your next wedding, your anniversary, your retirement, whatever, whatever it is. We got, or not we, but he. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got you. He got you covered. We got you. All righty. And on that note, actually, I want to just give a shout out to Mr. Engineer of All Engineers, Dip to the Lean. Yo. Thanks, everybody, for watching, man. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you uh, for coming through, bro. It was really good. And, uh, Thank you for having me. Nice listening to you. Very, very uh, good information that we all can learn and use for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got one more for all of you guys. And on that note, we out. Oops. <laughs>